Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to be going over an example of a question for the topic in A level of deflection of a charged particle in an electric field. So specifically this is electric field, not magnetic field, we'll do another video on that. Um, this is a sample past paper question and we'll just be going through it step by step to have a go at um, this specific type of question. So this question reads, two horizontal metal plates are 120 millimetres long and 40 millimetres apart. The upper plate is maintained at a potential of minus 20 volts with respect to the lower one. The region between the plates is a vacuum. An electron beam enters the electric field along a line midway between the plates. The electrons in the beam have a velocity of 6 by 10 to the 6 metres per second. So the first thing to do with this type of one is always draw a diagram because it can be super useful. So we know we have two horizontal metal plates. So let's draw those. And we know that they're 120 millimeters long each. We know that this distance here is 40 millimeters. Um, we're told that the upper plate is maintained at a potential of minus 20 volts with respect to the lower one. That means that the overall potential difference is, apologies, 20 volts, um, but the, it also means that the top plate is our negative plate and the bottom plate is our positive because the top one is at minus 20 volts with respect to the bottom one. So that'll be useful whenever we think about what way our beam is going to be deflected in the field. So the region between the plates is a vacuum, that's important. And it comes up in so many questions that a vacuum um, is needed so that uh, the particles don't interact with the air particles and then get deflected in a different way that's not due to the electric field, say in this example. Uh, the electron beam enters the electric field along the midway line between the plates. So if we said enters over here, then obviously this distance here would be 20 millimeters. And we can say that these are electrons, just to remind ourselves. Um, the electrons also have a velocity. This is a horizontal velocity because they're just traveling in a straight horizontal line. So we'll do VH is equal to 6 by 10 to the 6 meters per second. From our diagram, we also know that that 40 millimeters represents the distance d, the separation between the plates. So you can put that in there. Whenever we write down all our values like this, we always want to make sure that we've got them in SI units so that we don't have to convert them later down the line or we don't forget to convert them. So we can automatically say that that is 40 by 10 to the minus three meters. Um, you can obviously write it not in standard form if you don't want to, but uh, I just like to keep it like that for ease. So there's our diagram drawn. We've got our initial values set out. Super handy. Calculate the electric field strength. So we know a few different equations for the electric field strength, but automatically looking at my values, I've got a value for V, as in the potential difference, and I've got a value for D. And we know that E is equal to V over D. Therefore, E is equal to 20 over 40 by 10 to the minus three. Always remember to put your uh, SI units in there, not the millimeters. And if you put that into your calculator, then you get 500 volts per meter. Always remember to know what the units are gonna be in case I don't give it to you in the question. It's really good to um, keep that in mind. So that's our first question done, easy peasy. So we can add that now to our list of values that we can carry over. Okay, calculate the force on an electron as it enters the electric field. Okay, so the force of the electron, we immediately go, okay, F is equal to QE. That's probably the first equation we'd think of in terms of forces in an electric field, where Q is the charge of the electron and E is the electric field strength. So for an electron, you'll be given this in, exam, in an exam, but we know that the charge is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Um, it's also important to note that yes, it is a negative value because it's an electron, 
but we don't necessarily need to worry about putting that into our equation just a second because that's really just going to tell us the direction of the um, movement and we can deduce that from our our diagram anyway so we can just leave it in the positive value and then we put our value for uh, the electric field strength in and then if we put that into our calculator we get a value of 8 by 10 to the minus 17 newtons so now we've got the force that feels in it feels in the electric field as well perfect next question is sketch the path the beam will take so we can just look at our diagram now and go right okay it's obviously going to be deflected is it going to be deflected up or is it going to be deflected down now we know that electrons are negatively charged and we know that like charges repel and unlike charges attract so that it'll be repelled away from the negative um part of the plate and it'll be attracted towards the positive part so we draw something along the lines of that uh, which is half a parabola and that's important in all these questions the motion is parabolic motion and that will help us later on whenever we're trying to figure out accelerations and stuff like that. But we'll get on to that in a second. But that's the um, rough path that our beam will take. Okay, calculate the acceleration of an electron in the beam as it passes between the plates. So as we know with parabolic motion, uh, in the horizontal direction, we're going to have a constant velocity and therefore no acceleration. Whereas in the vertical direction, we have a constant acceleration and therefore not constant velocity. So whenever asked for the acceleration here, we know we're talking about the vertical direction. So yes, we can use the equations of linear motion generally, but having done this question before, I can tell you now that if you start looking at the values that you have in the vertical direction, you don't have enough to satisfy the, any of the linear equation uh, linear motion equations. So we've got to look for another way to find the acceleration. Another way that we can find the acceleration is we know that the force is equal to QE, but according to Newton's second law, it is also equal to MA, which means we already have our, our value for the force. So we can just take that as 8 by 10 to the minus 17. And our mass of an electron is also going to be given in uh, your test. You wouldn't have to memorize this value, but it's 9.11 by 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, and then times your acceleration. So then your acceleration is equal to 8 by 10 to the minus 17 over 9.11 by 10 to the minus 31. And therefore your acceleration equals 8.78 by 10 to the 13 meters second to the minus two. And that acceleration is just in the vertical direction. It is not in the horizontal direction, as we just discussed with our parabolic motion. OK, and I've just got rid of some of the values that we don't really need anymore for the latter part of these questions. So calculate the time taken for the electron beam to pass from one end of the plates to the other. So obviously that distance is a horizontal distance, which means we're going to be dealing with the velocity in the horizontal direction. We know because of parabolic motion that the velocity in the horizontal direction is constant. And therefore we can use our speed equals distance over time equation rather than having to worry about the equations of linear motion. So if we just do speed equals distance over time, therefore time equals distance over speed, and the, dis the horizontal distance here is 120 millimeters, which is 120 by 10 to the minus three meters. Be careful that you don't miss that one out because then you'll be getting a, a wrong answer. Um, and then over the speed, which as we know, the horizontal uh, speed is six by 10 to the six meters per second. And if we put that into our calculator, we get two by 10 to the minus eight seconds. So that's the time it takes for it to travel from uh, this end of the plate over here to this end of the plate. So now we want to calculate the distance from the midline at which the electron beam leaves the region between the plates. So that's the 
um, distance that it moves vertically whilst traveling through the electric field. So that makes us think that then it doesn't move the full 20 millimeters in the vertical direction before it leaves uh, the plates. So really it's moving some distance here, which we could call S. Um, we don't know what that distance is yet, obviously, but we know that it's not it's less than 20 millimeters. So if we're dealing with a vertical distance, then we're dealing with our constant acceleration, which means we're dealing with the equations of linear motion. So we are trying to find S. We've already got A, we've got T. That uh, horizontal velocity isn't relevant here, so we can't take that into account. Um, Whenever our beam first tries to enter the field, there is no vertical velocity because it's just traveling in the horizontal direction. Therefore, our initial velocity here is zero because it only starts moving vertically uh, with a vertical component as it enters the field. So the initial is zero, which means that we now have A, T, S, and U, and we can use that to form an equation to find out what S is. So in this case, I'm going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. The equations of linear motion, you do need to look over if um, you don't do maths. Obviously, you maybe haven't used these in quite a while. So um, you do need to learn them for this topic or else you're going to be caught out. So we're using this equation here because U is zero, this, cancel, this term cancels out. So S equals a half. And then our acceleration we calculated is 8.78 by 10 to the 13 meters per second squared. And our time is 2 by 10 to the minus 8, and that's all squared. So if we put that into our calculator, we get 0.0176 meters. And if we want to put that into millimeters, that would be 17.6 millimeters. So Obviously, that proves then that it doesn't move the full 20 millimeters before it leaves the electric field. So that's, that can obviously indicates that we have a correct answer there. Okay, and if we have a look at our final question then, uh, as part of this question, um, we have to calculate the final velocity of an electron in the beam as it leaves the electric field. So the fact it says final velocity and not final horizontal or final vertical velocity, um, shows us that we are actually having to find this velocity here, uh, which is at an angle, obviously, um, as it comes out. So if we have a velocity or a force or anything like that that's at an angle, we generally are going to have to resolve some forces here. So if we draw a wee diagram down here, this is our final velocity. But we have the horizontal velocity. We have that 6 by 10 to the 6 meters per second. And we don't have the final vertical velocity at the moment, but we have all the makings to be able to find it. So we still know that u is equal to zero and we have all those other values. So we can go, right, okay, what equation are we gonna use? I will use v equals u plus a t. That u term cancels out again because u is zero. So v is equal to 8.78 by 10 to the 13 multiplied by two by 10 to the minus eight. If we put that into our calculator, 1.76 by 10 to the 6 meters per second. So we put that into our diagram here. And then, as we know, whenever we see a diagram like this, it's just a case of resolving forces using Pythagoras' theorem. So our V is just the hypotenuse of that triangle. Um, so we would know that 6 by 10 to the 6 squared plus 1.76 by 10 to the 6 squared is equal to b squared using Pythagoras' theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then the velocity is just going to be the square root of that answer. So if we put that into our calculators, we get a value of 6.25 by 10 to the 6 meters per second. So that is our final velocity, overall velocity, as it leaves the electric field, because it is not just traveling horizontally, it's not just traveling vertically, it is at an angle. We don't know that angle, so we use it Pythagoras' theorem rather than our Sokotoa. So 
that is our uh, deflection of charged particles in an electric field question done. A lot of them follow this kind of method or this kind of uh, structure. So if you can learn how to do this, then you're set up really well to try to do any other questions. Um, as usual, thank you very much for listening and I hope this helped.